All right, hello everybody. We're going to be making our bullet hell game in processing. Uh, we're going to get started by creating um, an array list that will store many different types of objects. In a bullet hell game, what makes it really fun is that there's all sorts of bullets and spaceships and particle effects all happening on the screen at one time. And we're going to write a single array list that will store all those things. And we'll also write a loop that will go through and automatically process all of those things. It'll That loop will make each of those objects animate and show themselves on the screen and make decisions and possibly remove themselves from the game as well. So that's what we're going to start off with. Uh, we'll make a simple example of a type of object that will go into this game and then we'll call that good for this video. So to start with we'll put in our usual void setup and void draw and I'm going to make this uh, reasonably small because um, I want to be able to show everything that's on the screen that's going on at the same time so you can feel free to make your game as big or as small as you want to make it. Uh, let's see, we also need to make our array list. So I'm going to make an array list and the things that the array list will contain will be called game objects. And we've been referring to this as an engine. The array list itself is not actually the, the engine. It is going to be the data structure that holds all of the things that are to be processed in the engine, but we'll just call it this uh, for simplicity's sake, I guess. Um, so that's going to be what we have to populate. This is something we're going to write in just a couple minutes, the game object class. And actually, I guess I shouldn't pluralize it. It's just going to be um, a game object is the kind of thing that will go in here. Uh, so we'll instantiate this list. And we'll be good to go to start uh, making this loop. So the loop is going to go in here. Every frame will animate all the game objects and we'll uh, have them make decisions and all that kind of great stuff. So first of all, let's talk about uh, game object. So that's going to be a class. So I'm going to make a new tab here for this class. Um, and it's going to be class game object. And the story with this is that game object, it will, there'll never actually be a thing that is just purely a game object and not a bullet or a spaceship or a star or something like that. So this is really a category of things. So we want to create a class that represents a category of things. And to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add in the abstract keyword. And this will just prevent us from accidentally creating a thing that is a game object and not anything else. So this will truly function as sort of a category of things in much the same way that, you know, you can have a category of animals called mammal. Uh, but there's no actual mammals in the world, right? There's tigers and bears and people. These are all examples of mammals. And you can point to a tiger or a bear or a person. But you can't point to a thing that is purely a mammal. That is just an idea. It's a category. So in the same sense, then this game object class will also be a category. Uh, and anything that belongs to this category can go into our our list and we'll be able to animate it and make it act and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to put down sort of a skeleton of the types of things that will uh, go into this game object class. So one nice thing is that anything that's common between all game objects, you can program right here. And then everything that's in this category will get those properties. So for example, pretty much everything in our game is going to have an X and Y coordinate. Uh, 
and it'll have a speed as well, a, X, a speed in the X direction and a speed in the Y direction. So these are things that everything in our game will have. And you know what? If it doesn't move, then that's fine. We'll just have DX and DY equal to zero, and it won't move. There's probably some other things we'll put in here eventually. This will be good enough for now. Uh, game object, even though we can't instantiate it, we'll still have some sort of default constructor. We won't really do anything with it. Um, and it's going to have three methods. One of them is going to be void show. And this will be the method that we will be overriding in our other classes. And so that's uh, going to be responsible for you know rendering the shapes, images, that kind of stuff, special effects, animations, that sort of thing. Uh, void act will be the behavior, uh, movement, shooting, decision making, all that kind of stuff, all the all the doing things. And then we'll also have a boolean function. Ooh. Boolean has died. And this function will return true or false depending on whether or not this particular game object has in fact died. Our spaceships will have hit points that can get to zero. Uh, other things, if they go off screen, they will die. Um, so for now, since we have to actually return something, I'll just return false as a default, um, and that'll, that'll be fine. The <laughs> default things are immortal. All right, so there we go. That's our, our game object class, our category. Everything that we want to put into this, it will be a game object. So now we'll go ahead and create the structure that will process this array list. So a cool thing about array lists and, and the reason we're using them instead of arrays is that they can grow and shrink and they'll start off with nothing inside of them. Um, there is this concept called a capacity, however. This, um, these parentheses here allow you to specify a capacity. Capacity is not the same thing as the size of the array list. Uh, the array list can have um, you know, a certain number of things in it that's its uh, size, but its capacity is um, sort of how much memory is reserved for things inside of here. It's not how many things we have, but it's how much potential space uh, can we uh, use up. And that can change as well, but it lags out pretty hard when it has to change that. So let's just make a default, you know, 10,000 game objects. And chances are in our game we won't exceed 10,000. And you know, we could probably reduce this if during the course of testing the game we see that it's we never even get close to that. So we'll just leave it at 10,000 for now. This uh, will mean our game takes up more memory when it's running, but that's a small price to pay for better performance. Okay, so let's um, go and take this array list now and actually go through it step by step. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through it backwards. So our array list, we're going to start at the end, the last index, and we're going to go back uh, all the way to the first index. And each time, tell each game object, whatever it is, spaceship, bullet, whatever, to you know show, act, and check if it's died. So here's how you do it. Uh, first of all, we want to start at the last index because we might be removing things. And in an array list, if you are you know, uh, traversing it forward, starting from the first thing to the last thing, well, when you remove an element from an array list, that can be a problem. You end up reordering the indexes of the things that are in the array list, the, n the numbers, basically, of where each thing is. And then you end up skipping over some or possibly going out of bounds. So guess what? You can avoid all those problems if you traverse backwards through the array list. So we're going to start at the end of the array list. So what is the last index? So what we can do is we can do engine.size, which tells us how many things are in this array list. And since we start counting from zero, all right, so if we have, say, four things, those are numbered zero, one, two, three. If we have a hundred things, they're numbered zero through ninety-nine. 
So the last index is always one less than the size. So that will tell us the last index. So what we'll do is we'll call that um, an integer, we'll just call it um, last index, I guess, equals that. Um, and actually, we could just call this i, really. We'll just start i here. And then what we'll do is we'll use a while loop to say while i is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll start i here, which is our counting uh, variable for this loop. Uh, and we'll keep on decreasing it as long as it's greater than zero. So I'll put that in here as well. I minus minus will count down by one. So we start at the last index and we keep on going until we get to the bottom index, zero, uh, or well, I guess technically less than zero, but the zero will be the last one we do each time we go down by one. And what do we do with i? Well, we're going to use that to get a particular game object and, and tell it to do its things. So what we'll do is um, we'll have a temporary game object. Uh, we'll call it object, uh, and we will get it from the engine. So engine dot get i. So this will fetch whatever index we give it. Uh, fetch that particular object. This object might represent again a star, a spaceship, a bullet. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it represents because each time we're going to tell it to do the things that are part of its category. We're going to tell it to show itself. We're going to tell it to do its actions. And then if it has died, we're going to remove it. And that's basically our engine right there. That's that's the whole thing. Um, that will work for any size of the objects inside of it. It'll start at the end. It'll tell each object in turn to do its various tasks. And then we'll go to the next one. And just do this over and over again every frame. So this doesn't do anything if we run it. I mean, we did a lot of work just now, but it doesn't really do much. So the reason why is because this is a, just an engine. It isn't a game yet. So it's the foundations for a game, but not much of a game. So what we're going to do is make an example of a game object. We're going to make some stars. We'll add them into our engine and watch them animate. So let's do that. So this is a really good example of how you can make things that belong to this game object category. So everything we make, bullets, stars, spaceships, anything at all that's going to be an object that's animated in this world, um, we're going to have to do it this way. So we'll make a star tab. And we'll make a class star. Oops, capital S is the convention. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to extend game object. And I should put the S on the end. It extends game object. So when a class such as star extends another class, then it is going to acquire all of the instance variables, the data of that game object. So stars automatically will have x, y, and dx, and dy. And it also acquires these methods. And what we're going to do each time is actually override these me methods. So we'll redefine how they work. So in other words, let's do it. We'll do, uh, I guess, a constructor first. And its constructor will initialize the value. So you know, this will be where our um, star is created. So that's what it does. It just initializes variables. So x and y and dx and dy. We just give them their initial values. So for um, y, let's make them start at the top of the screen. And they're going to kind of filter down. Uh, x, well, it could be anywhere 
uh, you know, horizontally speaking. So let's just make this random. So we'll make it a random number between uh, zero and width um, dx. Well, the stars are just going to come straight down in my game. So I'm just going to set dx to zero and then dy, we can make it a random number between whatever, three and five or whatever numbers you feel would make for pretty stars. So that's the story. And of course, if it's positive uh, dy, then it's going to go down the screen. So next, we'll make a show function. Uh, to keep things efficient, my stars are going to be rectangles. But later on, we can improve upon that design. It doesn't really matter right now. So we'll fill with white. And uh, we will make a rectangle at x and y and we'll make it um, we'll use the speed to represent its size as well that way the faster things are bigger so it gives it an illusion of depth and then we'll do an act function stars are going to be pretty boring they're just going to move uh, whatever direction our dx and dy takes us so they'll just be x equals x plus dx and y equals y plus dy. And then has died. We'll override that one as well. So basically, we want the star to die when it goes off the screen. And that's going to be when it goes beyond the bottom. So we'll return uh, if y is greater than height. So if this is greater than height, that returns true because it has died. If it's not greater than height, that means it's still alive, so it returns false. So that's the story there. All right, so wow, look at that. We made a star class. If we run it, will anything happen? Mm, nope, nothing happens yet. The reason is because you know we, we have only made a blueprint for creating stars. It's part of a category, which is great. That means we can add it to our, if we eventually make objects that are stars, we can add it to our array list. But right now, uh, we don't have any stars in our array list. So I'll just do a couple of cosmetic things. I'm going to say um, background zero to make it look like outer space. Uh, I'm gonna say in setup, I'm gonna say rect mode center just so that our rectangles are drawn with the X and Y coordinates at their center. And I think that's it. So just to, for a, you know, to see something happen, what we'll do is we'll add a star every frame. So I'll say engine.add new star. This calls the constructor. You might recognize that function there. It's calling our constructor creating a new star, adding it to the engine, and then I'll just immediately start showing, acting, and eventually it'll be removed once it goes off the screen. So if we run that, we should get stars that are coming down the screen. All these stars are obeying the code that we wrote in the star function, and they can go anywhere an object, a game object can go because star extends game object. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, just a reminder, what we did here was we created uh, an array list of game objects so that any class we make that extends game object can go inside of it. Uh, so any object of those classes. So that means, you know, we're going to make bullets and spaceships and explosion particles, and they'll all extend game object. Star was an example. We did an example of a simple one you've seen before. It had a constructor that initialized its uh, its instance variables. It has a show function to illustrate what it looks like. It's got an act function to, to move, and it can decide whether or not it's dead based on its y coordinate. And then this loop here is really where all the magic happens. Every frame, it's going through all of the game objects, however many there are, starting with the last one, going down to the first one each time doing all the things that game objects are supposed to do, going down by one each time. So there you go. That's the first 
of many videos to come about making a bullet hell game in processing. Thanks, everybody.